welcome to Dorgan's Domain, episode 15. I am Dorgan Kishu, paladin and dragon rider. In this episode of Dorgan's Domain, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some stories um, from one I, uh, my different groups that I did uh, a while back. It's been a little while since I had you know regular groups, although I am in a, currently in a 5e group right now, but I am a player. My first group I created uh, was, or first group that um, I was part of, was when I was uh, a teenager and um, maybe 18, 19. And um, I had learned how to play basic Dungeons and Dragons and then Expert. And like I said over the, I've mentioned this on Twitter over the years. Uh, I've added in advanced Dungeons and Dragon rules uh, to add depth, and um, they just have a lot of good material. And um, yeah, so the first group was my brother, his girlfriend. Um, and my brother's best friend and me, I was running the game. And uh, they had a group and they each had two or three characters. Although I will say this first of all, my brother's first character, and I've mentioned this somewhere uh, along in, in, on social media, I think, but my brother's first character was a dwarf, a uh, first level dwarf, and he died by looking up a fireplace and having a brick fall and hit his head. So, you know, level one, right? So that was the end of his first character, and then he created a fighter. Anyway, so that group lasted quite a while. Some stories in regards to that group. Um, our fighter that was in our group, uh, not my brother's, but another fighter, there was another fighter in the group, uh, had 18 strength, and you know, back then that was that was really high. I mean, it's, it's still high. But anyway, he was very strong. Uh, he began to get a little cocky, though. Um, and we we had a, I had a, a campaign um, we called it, the, I think we called it the, the Black Ship Adventure or something like that. Because they went to this tavern that was on the ocean and there was this perfectly black ship uh, in the harbor, all black, um, just like a shadow, right? Um, and when they entered it, I believe they had kind of maybe an undead battle, some kind of thing like that. It was a while ago, but um, anyway, it's very cool. But in this tavern afterwards, I, this was, I think this was afterwards, uh, so this fighter I was talking about in our group was we was at, at the bar and there was this huge dude next to him. And they Somehow they got into it and uh, this dude literally physically knocked the fighter through the wall. Um, and I did this on purpose. Um, like I said, he was getting really cocky and, and he was thinking he was indestructible. And um, it, I, it, you know, I'm not saying that's, that's not okay. I just remember at the time I felt like he kind of did be not taken down a notch. So I had this big dude knock him through a wall and it just, blew my fighter away. He, the guy was just like, wow. You know, he didn't even know that was possible. Ended up the dude was actually a werebear that was in human form. So he was he was very huge and he had strength even when he wasn't in form. He had still had a, a very strong guy. So that was one story. Um, another cool story was um, once the group was uh, hunted by a werewolf. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's another lycanthrope. I love lycanthropes, but uh, anyway, it was, a, it was a werewolf called Black Meth. He was a black werewolf, huge dude. Uh, he was hunting down the group, party member, one by one, right? And uh, there was a scene in an alleyway where Black Meth was at the end, or you know, one side of the alley, and then that same fighter was on the other end. Um, he had a sword of teleportation, so he wanted to teleport behind the werewolf, right? So I'm all right, all right. So he teleports behind the werewolf, and then he rolls a 20. And I'm just thinking, you know, I just love Black Meth. Just an awesome character. But it was too good. He, he, the, this is where something with the, with the DM, you can kind of, there's moments where you kind of go and give it to him because you just think it's just so good for story purposes and whatnot. But anyway, yeah, so good idea to teleport behind him. Then he rolls a 20. So I let him cut Black Meth's head off. Um, and it was just, you know, an awesome moment for the whole group. Um, unfortunately, he didn't burn the body. Um, and the reason I say that is because the later, a later thing that I did uh, was a scene where the whole group went into this chamber where there was this evil dude on a throne. And um, he was actually, I think, a necromancer. And uh, suddenly he calls in all these dead enemies of the group, like people, including Black Myth. Uh, all these characters came into the room that had been raised. So this necromancer had been, you know, picking up the dead bodies and, and raising them. And then once he had enough of them, he brought them to his place and he had, so they had to battle against a bunch of uh, their enemies. 
um, which felt like a really fun um, storyline. It was, it was great, and that, the battle was pretty, pretty huge. Um, another story um, is uh, it's funny. The same player. He was just you know he's just a funny player. He was really great, great enthusiasm. Well, this one guy, and I've mentioned this in social media too. This guy used to sit there practice rolling until it was his turn. If he'd roll something good, he'd just kind of leave it there and and hope that he could, could say, oh yeah, I rolled well. I mean, so he wasn't a full-blown cheater, but every now and then he'd try to get away with that, and I was like, no, you were practicing, you got to re-roll it, but this guy was really funny. He was a really enthusiastic player, and um, so he, but he had a, in addition to his fighter, he originally had a mage too, named Sinbar, and uh, it was funny because he, I think he got kind of arrogant with him too, and because uh, they had, you know, they were doing good as a group, and uh, he took on a dragon by himself and he got turned to ash. And from that point, Sinbar's uh, nickname was uh, Cinder. So, kind of an inside joke, but uh, yeah, it was. we would make jokes about him every now and then about Cinder, you know, because of his not wise attempt to, to battle a dragon all by himself. I don't, I think that like, group, I think that group, the highest that luck group ever got to was level eight or nine. So they were pretty, you know, they're pretty good, but. And then, um, you know, I played with them for maybe two or three years, and um, and then I didn't play for a while. And about ten years later, I uh, got into a production of Hamlet, which was awesome. Uh, I was just a, a small role, but um, I didn't really want lead roles. Anyway, I met this guy in this Hamlet production. Uh, he found out that I'd played Dungeons and Dragons, so he wanted to start a group. And uh, so, yeah, so he uh, he had this really overpowered character. He had been part of a group where they just everybody was overpowered, and they were just you know going through the world tearing it to pieces. And it's not it's fine. Some people like that, but I like to keep it a little more realistic. Anyway, so uh, I told him I don't really run that kind of game. Um, you know, I guess the best part about rules is that it makes it uh, add some. Uh, the thing about having boundaries, you know, is that it. Adds, you can actually be have a sense of danger, and, and you, you know, you obviously think a little bit more about what you're going to do. Um, anyway, so he, you know, toned we toned down his his character. I think it might have been a drow. Um, we decided to do, and there was two guys from work I got to play, and then there was this other guy that was an actor that I met somewhere. Um, anyway, so there was like four guys and me, and we'd um, we decided to do an evil chaotic group, or they did, or. Um, which I never ran. So this was my second main group, and I was in my late 20s. And uh, yeah, the leader was a Viking, and he had a castle or a keep, and um, or he had a ship. May have had a ship. I think he did. Was, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So in that group, we had a, the one guy was a drow, one guy was a Viking. He wasn't even evil. I don't think he was just chaotic, um, neutral. I think. But um, and then uh, there is a. I created, uh, I've mentioned this on my blogs and, and, and Twitter as well, and my videos. I've created a hybrid orcs, this, uh, you know, different ones, black, red, and they have different, different specs. But so this one guy created a black orc character. These are very noble characters, generally leaders of armies. Yeah, so we had a black orc, we had drow, we had a viking, and um, that was cool. That was very, uh, I have to say, it was fun playing like an evil, chaotic kind of group. They weren't just going around killing people, but they were not, you know, they were not nice. And beyond that, I did some, you know, uh, sessions with, as a dungeon master, I did sessions with one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, like where there's just me running somebody through something. But my main two groups were in my late teens and in my late 20s. Anyway, I just wanted to share some of my stories. Um, it was, it's been a while since, um, you know, I, I was with those, running those groups. And um, like I said, I'm currently in a 5e group. I wanted to, I wanted to be a player, so I asked a guy if he'd run it, a guy I knew. And um, I'm a paladin, and I love it. Um, I'm definitely interested in rangers, and I'd like to play one. I played. I when I ran my original group, I had NPC characters in their group, and I had a, a paladin or a ranger that was very was a big part of it. And then in the second group, the evil group, I had an NPC paladin. Uh, that I had hunting the the group. But as time has gone by, I'm actually considering. A, I'm thinking a warlock would actually be a great character to play, and I'm even thinking about multi multi classing with a, a warlock and even even my paladin. I don't know. I gotta I gotta look at all that stuff. I'm thinking about purchasing the dungeon master guide soon. 
Um, and so that I can get familiar with the 5e rules in regards to running games. I think I kind of have a gist, um, but you know, I've only ran games using basic expert AD and D rules, not the 5e. I really like the 5e system as a player. Um, I just I like it a lot. I like it playing with it. I watched Critical Role, and I, I love I love it on there. I think they've done a great job with it. I'm not putting down uh, second, third, or fourth edition. I never got drawn into those, and I wasn't actually gaming much when those all came out. But Anyway, I just want to share some of my stories, etc. And uh, I appreciate you checking out Dorgan's Domain, and I will see you on Twitter.